There you go, it's Herbie. But look, look at, look at God, look at God. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Chanel Gabriel. We are here at the Zora Neale Hurston Tent with continued author readings. Um, I am a poet, singer, and the executive director at Urban Word, a nonprofit that does poetry, hip hop, and the arts with young people across New York City and across the country with the National Youth Poet Laureate Program. But right now, we're going to go into an amazing author reading. We had we just finished one with Candace Williams. Um, once again, all of these authors, everyone that you hear to the stage, um, you can actually go to the Schomburg tent right there and get um, book signings as well as get the books themselves. Okay, so. Now, if you are under the sound of my voice, feel free to come join us at any point in time. But I'm going to introduce the, uh, the second uh, panelist, a uh, reader. It is uh, Cynthia Manick, who is the author of No Sweet Without Brine, uh, which is, just came out under um, Amistad Harper Collins. Um, Cynthia is the editor of The Future of Black Afrofuturism, Black Comics, and Superhero Poetry, and the author of Blue Hallelujahs. She has received fellowships from Cave Canem, Hedgebrook, McDowell Colony, Chateau de Napole, among others. I, I might have butchered butch that. I did Spanish, not French in school. Um, <laughs> but they're the founder of, Manning is the founder of the reading series Soul Sister Review and her poem, Things I Carry Into the World. That was made into an actual film by Motion Poems. And we had. They're absolutely amazingly accomplished. I don't, I don't want to even belabor, belabor the moment and bring you to the stage, okay? But we're going to have a great conversation right after. As you're hearing the words, the poetry, feel free to start coming up with ideas and questions because we are going to have a Q&A at the end after my conversation. So please show some love. Round of applause for Cynthia Manning. Keep clapping. How are you today? I'm full of this melanin. You guys look fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna read maybe three, maybe four poems. But I'm gonna start at the beginning of the book. The book is called No Sweet Without Brine. With blackness comes both the sweet and the brine. This poem is called, Always Use a Gold Crayon to Color Your Cell Skin. We little brown peas, we awkward canaries, black apostrophes that God made know how to love ourselves small. I remember the hunch of middle school shoulders, just a beauty like it was the moon or the last buffalo. There were caramel boys in red Jordans, mouths full of recess and celebrity names, Lisa Bonet, Vanity, Ray Don Chong. There must have been secrets in the formula. Ingredients offered only to a select few, or perhaps a crossroad deal of ash and lullabies. Hair, not a mind thousand frizz. Check. Skin, shades of toasted coconut. Check. Body, slice of glitter bomb that never sweats. Check. We dark wonders, we blooming nightshades, past the hot comb sizzle and splatter to perm cracked tresses and neutralizers. Dare, Madam C, dare, satin bonnet. Protect us from natural rain and cotton. Plant yourself so deep we crave you always. Our hands are question marks. This need doesn't wane like starlight or an Achilles ache that's never done. I blame a lot of people for all the ways we are a problem. For the abundance of beige crayons, the heavy smirks towards gap to smiles. I am forging a bonfire surrounded by soil and vowels, Grace Jones, fish fries, cocoa butter, wrap and brown streaks missing from the rainbow. We so fly, no voodoo required. We so fly, cause constellation. We so fly, the sun be jealous. one is for those who've ever been to a gynecologist. <laughs> That's a BS. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a BS, okay? Uh, the poem is called Dear Future Body, Keep Your Skin Thick. Yesterday my legs were popped and stirred as the gyno said, you should go on The Biggest Loser. No. I heard cities at the skull base stuttering over each other, vine and vowels of your rules and that garden under your chin. The fire real estate of don't you want to be 
beautiful. We have known the trap of nameless and hungry BMI indexes, dear God, and sample size fashion. I escape and get caught in the same geography again and again, unmade and remade. I forget I am more than a house of great bones, of Vaseline and Werther's originals. But the cast of the other world, meaning she has such a pretty face. I'm to tell you about a type of war. People carving the cowrie horses to survive, the outline of social media models, and how many calories is this bottle of air? What else can we eliminate? I always thought the planet Pluto was a black girl, now downgraded and mostly out. Dear future body, take a break today. Tell me, how are your kisses? Sometimes they give birth to promises, a season in the word, all in oxygen at the ready. Are you someone's night bloom? Remember, here's what remains, the prayers your mouth learns. I want us living, not just alive. I'm gonna do um, two more, two more. Okay, so if you didn't know, Calm app has an app where you can listen to bedtime stories by celebrities. Such as Idris Elba. <laughs> yeah, he's married and just have it to yourself. Okay, the poem is called My Calm App with a secret Idris Elba. One. This is my best waste of time. Hearing a voice tell a tale about a jungle when I'm at the end of the world. I remember my right to breathe that the body knows how to unfurl, imagine its tongue to carve a castle out of a mountain. Dare manufacture calm. We get used to being well over. I got a face that's never at rest, but it just his voice makes me want things. A brother to go old with lines of smiles, a necklace to dry watermelon seeds, or a welcome heated hand that coils with thy goosebump birthing. Two. Some days it's easier to remember that even the devil needs someone to love. To find soft moons in the edges, crooning words like a downward river. Please forget his hard hands at work. When I watched the TV show Bewitched, I thought, Dan must have had great dick. <laughs> the James Earl Jones of dick, the kind of dick where you're almost naked while wearing one sock and a head wrap. To make a woman hide herself, hide her daughter, and she's a knotted ball of hair, of sorries, and a nose full of questions. How can a man be unhappy when his woman is magic? I want to ask my mother this, or my dead grandma in a dream, because I've heard her story, second and third hand. Three, Idris is now talking about owls, ancient rock art, like it's something sacredly ripened together. I believe him. I almost forget my day of basement apartment laundry, hauling my back, black roots, clothes, and a keychain of blue pepper spray. The maintenance man, I mean devil, I mean nice man, asks for my hand and body every time I see him. One day I think he'll say no to my no thank you, who want to break something. I want to sink to something that's broken, pry it without a key. Child echoes learn how to love themselves, so I keep my spray loose, swallow my spit, think of calm and Idris, crooked paths to my cotton nightdress. I'm gonna end on Aretha Franklin. So I was at a residency a couple years ago and Aretha had just died, and I thought, I wonder if the trees know that Aretha has passed away. I know, I'm a weird poet, Brie. So I was like, I need a poem about this. The poem is called, I Wish the Trees Could Sway to Marvin and Aretha. Because sometimes I forget soil can do more than hold wooden or metal boxes. It pulls on elements my shins have long forgotten. There are seven different words for dirt in French. We hear what is left in the woods, children with 12 fingers or web toes. 
I used to pray for normal appendages. I often stop myself from talking out loud, singing, or others could hear, but we know of hush tales. Somebody's calling my name about where wounds used to go, to the trees swinging, someone's black uncle or son, sometimes daughters under steady stars, bright as birthday candles we can't blow. But let's not talk of dark histories, of how you and I are still alive, like three flowered maples or perennials or cold. We're all standing on a hilltop just over there with headphones, a seashell of Martel and Aretha, you forget the universe is expanding. So the gods are tired of our sand and stone, bones, brutal ozones. The oldest tree is over 4,000 years old. What if the rock doesn't hold like it used to? The bloom turns shallow because you can die from survival, you know. It's like working through jobs, the weight of limbs in winter. So this tree has been a lot of shit geographic shadows, but soul music can be a prayer. And what if it could reach every spore, every carbonated leaf, until every bark vibrates under our palms? What if Martin and Aretha make them remember what love sounds like, and all the wild things come so close, the trees no longer die standing up? Thanks, guys. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, everyone, we're going to get started with this Q&A. Um, and I have, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. You know, sometimes we have you to say notes. that, right? I, I, I write you down my questions and okay. my notes and my thoughts. But okay. she had some real, I'm a pop junkie. Yeah. And so I, I, sit, I sent some kindred spirits in here because there was so much infusion of culture of nostalgia, you know, like I, I felt it. Mm -hmm. um, and so those were the, I was like, oh, this is this is gonna be great. It's like in childhood, you know, cartoons, Saturday morning, in your floors and flakes, you're there, your mom's asleep, the TV is finally yours. Yes. <laughs> it's and like you're living the dream. Li literally living the dream. And I, I think you, you have so many different sections within this book. And I think each section just does something a little different to the spirit and I, I really appreciate it. Granted, they all, like really touched me. So um, you are very extremely accomplished, okay? All of the fellowships <laughs> and all of the awards and, and this is not your first book. This is not your first rodeo around this, but how did this book, uh, No Sweet Without Rhyme, how did this book uh, differ than the other ones you've written? Um, my first book, Blue Hollywood, was definitely more craft-based and looking towards the past. Um, this book is more craft-based Plus Cynthia. <laughs> Plus Cynthia. It's like this book, this book is more, I call them wide leg poems. It's like you go on the subway and guys with their legs are wide open everywhere. Women are all like this. Nah, at that. This poem is going to be all, these poems are all wide legs. I love that. That is such a great description. Yes. Wide leg poems. Cynthia yeah. spreading, not man spreading. Cynthia spreading. Cynthia spreading. Yes. Love to pick up all the space. All the space. And it's, it's like the poem itself, you'll see that in the poems as you read them, and I do encourage you all to get this book. And as you read them, that there's like, there might be very uh, gorgeous language, and then there's like this moment where it's like, oh, this you should say it real. like it is. She's got <laughs> real. real for one second. And you picked the poem that I, I most, uh, I, I think God rest her soul, my mother would have probably, but my mother is a huge, uh, was a huge Aegis Alba fan. Uh, so, are you still married to that girl? I mean, you know, I mean, she's probably lovely and amazing. You know, that. You, try to, you try to, you want people to stay together, but sometimes you're like, <laughs> spread the joy. Yeah. But, um, but I really appreciate you, you speaking about love. I think love poems have, have gone gone bye bye in some spaces and are not as embraced. And even even the desiring of love, like I, I felt that in there. And I really miss them. And I'm just curious, like, what was that an intentional? Like, I want to have a section around or of these poems that speak to desire, speak to love. Um, and, and I think when you think about um, social media and outside of our homes, you don't see black love a lot of spaces. You don't. If we do see it's an afterthought, afterthought of trauma. It's an afterthought of something horrible that's happened. You don't just see pure love for just love's sake. 
love between siblings, love for parents, love for your neighbor, love for your community, and keep going higher up. Love for your city, love for your state, and love for your universe. I mean, we can all, a class for love is infinite. So I can't write about that as well, that it's infinite. It's infinite. Yes, pain is easier to go to because we recognize it right away, but you still go to work in the morning. You still fall in love. You still have relationships. You still have babies. All that should be in our poetry. Agreed, agreed. And yeah, you definitely, I love the lens of, of, of looking at parents. Parent, parents. Um, there's quite a few segments where you're talking about the parents and your parents interacting with each other or wondering what that love is like. And I think sometimes as, as people, we only see our parents as parents. Yeah, and, and, and you don't know that they're really they're adults with bills. They're just bigger than us with bills to pay. We don't realize until when a lot of times I'm like, oh shoot, they don't know what they're talking about either. Okay, it's a realization that you have to learn as, yeah. a, as a child. And, and as an adult. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm still exactly. so like, oh yeah, my dad did that. That was young. Yeah, that, that was my right. child. You know? <laughs> that was not right. <laughs> and you have, you have so many moments where you explore that. So, um, and you, I mentioned, you know, you received a number of fellowships. And, and you've you know, also written work in conversation with other artists' work. I see you doing something, a tribute to the amazing Patricia Smith, you know, um, you know, Robin and Cosby Lewis. Um, how has, how has those experiences, oh, you can see that by the How have those experiences, both the fellowships and also the, the, the consuming of poetry, influenced uh, the creation of this book? Well, I think we're, all, we're always surrounded by teachers, right? To the people we meet in our lives at workshops, people we meet in the corner store, they're all teaching us something. And when you think about craft, writers like Patricia Smith, um, Tahem Bajess, Rachel Eliza, they are all tuned to the language of craft and poetry. So hearing their stories, how they story tell, proves how you can story tell. They all give you examples of blueprints to follow and remix for your own for your own sake. Definitely. And they also, they're really, really poets. I think we all are fascinated by poets who are gone, God bless their souls. But let's teach and learn from living poets who are doing the work now, who are teaching the work now, who are writing right now. Definitely so. I, I think that that's so important in, in the way that you share and the way you fuse. Like, that's also almost an element of pop culture that you're bringing into the work, right? Yeah. I think we think about pop culture only in the I Dream of Genie. Yes, which is yes. great. I was I, I cracked up because I was like, <laughs> I've never thought about Darren uh, in bed. And uh, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't level up. How did he even get with her? You know, what skill does he have? I'm like, <laughs> <"This> <laughs> <is> <laughs> <my> <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I see one person like, yeah. What skill does he have? Yeah. He has not something. <laughs> what is a good advertising agent? <laughs> she was hoping to bail him out quite she was often. She's building up mad times. I mean, but you also you talked about you talked about a Little Mermaid in there. You know, I just and, oh, and I yeah. wonder how Ursula, much Ursula, my girl Ursula, did you wrong? I'm just saying. Oh, I think she was misunderstood as she well. Was. <laughs> terms, how much of the? I know that you're of course reexamining now, but how many of these different pulling ins from those moments and those experiences or memories? How much of those were things that you currently explored? versus were there things that you always kind of had questions about? I'm just curious, like, if you were to percentage it out, was it like half this book was really me in the moment processing all of these things? Or was it like, I'm actually going to tell you about Ursula, because I thought about that when I was getting, when I was X amount of years old, when I first saw The Little Mermaid. I'm just, you was know, she gorgeous? She was gorgeous. You know, I think my, my, my poems are, are really memory-based. I call it memory palettes. So I'm going into a moment in time, I'm writing about a moment, that will ricochet to the first time I had that moment. Mm-hmm. And usually that moment happened when I was younger, when I was watching Facts of Life, or when I was, you know, watching the Jetsons, or when I was sort of thinking about, now I'm, gonna, I'm an adult. You know, I think about Jeannie, you know, she was, she got, she got in a bottle. That's not, that's not cool. <laughs> yeah, that's not cool. You know, you think back <laughs> at your life and being examined, but you thought you were gonna be because of the moments, and I who am I, who I am now? I think the pop culture comes in in terms of memory, in terms of reframing how I live my life now. So it's definitely, ah, thank you. Yeah. So there's this idea of like taking those stories back then and seeing how they shaped and reframed everything in your life right now. Yeah. Because when you watch 2D, you're like, oh, I'm going to be 2D. I'm going to be on skates. I'm going to be rolling around. I'm going to scare it. That's my life. <laughs> That's my life. That's my life. <laughs> 
I, I was also the person that, for me, it was, I, I remember being very upset as a child um, in, the, in The Little Mermaid at the fact that he could, she didn't have to get rid of her fishtail. He could have yeah. just got a bathtub and just, like, kept her there. It could have compromised. He could have been all or nothing in Disney. Let's leave a conversation about compromising. There you go. Yeah. Turn up. Turn down for what? <laughs> all right. And you speak a lot about legacy and inheritance, once again, talking about parents and family. Um, as you were to sum up what you inherited, you know, what you think you inherited from from your family specifically, because you, you speak about them a lot, um, what would you say? I know you sum a lot of it up in different poems, but... Um, that kind of the ability to love, the ability to recognize love, um, the ability to laugh, and um, the ability to ask weird questions. I think when we're young, we ask. There's a March happening. Oh, there's a March happening. Okay. When we're young, we ask questions about everything, right? We want to know why is ketchup red? We want to know why, you know, why are peaches brown? And as we get older, we sort of lose that ability to ask these crazy questions. But my mom was always like, hey, you can ask whatever you want to ask. You can wonder whatever you want to wonder. Write it down. Someone will answer you. It's not going to be me, but someone's going to answer you. <laughs> so they definitely encourage me to keep on asking those weird questions. You know, all of a sudden it means friends. I kind of want to know. And I'll write it down. I'll think about it. And I'll be home one day. Yes. Yeah. The ability to ask and explore. The asking. The asking. Is yeah. that sometimes some families are, I don't know, my, I, I can ask. I just no, remember. It's, it's like, like your old school. Tell me business. Um, Don't talk business. What are you doing over here? Yeah. Go on, just go on with yourself. Yeah, and so we have time for a Q and A really quickly. I do want to open up. Oh, oh, we got questions. I love it. I love it. Because <laughs> um, I had one more, but I was like, let me. I'll donate. I'll donate my time. I'll, I'll let somebody else reclaim it. So I'll go to my friend right here. That's you. That's you. Hi. Um. So as an English teacher and an educator, I often find that educators are not necessarily my favorite. I'm gonna step just a little closer so I can hear you. Can you actually stand just really quickly, and maybe that might help. As, as an educator, can you stand and say your answer? Hi, I'm Kimberly. So, um, Thank you, as an English teacher and an educator, I often find that poetry is not always a favorite of my students when I'm teaching poetry. I'm teaching superheroes, you think about Marvel, you think about comic books, what is their origin story? How do students write their origin story? What is a talent? Is it walking down hallways? I don't know, but that could be awesome. Have them think about themselves as, well, who am I going to be tomorrow? Where did that come from? It could be imaginary, it could be realistic, it could run the gamut. Also think about who do they like in pop culture? Write a little, write a little to that person. Write a Superman. Write a little page I have in my book. I mean, why not? So a movie you like, reimagine the ending. Have them become the new creators of something that they like. Have them remix it and get to the bottom poetry that way. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to be doing signings <laughs> right over there. So you, you, you look at your great book. Look at my book. Go ahead. I appreciate it. And also, just seeing to all educators, I, I run a nonprofit called Urban Word, and we do poetry and hip hop with young people. We're in schools and do residencies in schools. And definitely, you know, if there's a conversation, if you would like to have a conversation, I, I was a teaching artist. That's how I started there. And I have an alum in the building I want to shout out who's an amazing writer. Um, <laughs> just bomb and could probably talk, talk and support the, um, the conversations around how you got into writing too. Um, but she had, I thought I was going to say one more. Go ahead. Speaking of alumni, go ahead. <laughs> um, could you talk about like, getting Well, damn, that's a deep. 
come up here and do my job. Okay, okay, I want to do another question. That's a perfect question. Okay, what would I tell my future self to be inspired by by this book? The ability to bridge what's needed and what you like. So you want to talk about racism. You can talk about racism, but also talk about how you dealt with it. You can talk about Shakespeare and Outcast. You can talk about Reading Rainbow and the news. How do you know that you can do both simultaneously? It's not an either or, or as a black writer. You can be all things all the time. I'm gonna preach into people's lives. <laughs> it's not authoritative. It's my opinion. <laughs> it's my opinion. <laughs> And um, I think I think that might be the last time, the last moment. I do have a giveaway of Ooh. your book, as well as this wonderful bag. And so, of course, once again, as much did you, as did I had you time, think about how you're gonna do this last time. You, you saw me. You saw me. You saw me. You saw me. You you already have you already have the book, right? So I'm gonna give it to. There you go. I'm gonna just give it to the other person that asked the question. Exactly. What did you do? And um, I just want to direct everyone, um, once again, I thank you so much. That they, you, you your book me. is absolutely amazing. Please make sure you get her book as well as all of the other authors, books, Candace Williams, um, and so many others will be right over there. They have the book for sale. They also have the ability for you to get us an autographed oh, copy. Really? Okay. Little heart. It's, it's worth a whole lot. And it's going to be worth even more. <laughs> <laughs> This is how I'm this hype work. I'm loving this hype work you're doing. Okay, okay. You know, and, and um, just continue to keep supporting. We have one more panel happening here, at least another panel that I'll just be opening, and that yeah. one is going to be... Natasha. Natasha Nevada Diggs and <laughs> yeah. Claudia Rankin. <laughs> I'm going to try not to fangirl. Yeah, um, I got to appreciate gonna, that one. <laughs> that's going to be great. And um, that's at 2.15. Um, but thank you so much once again. and wishing you continued success. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah. keep putting these words together. Keep. I, I, I probably admonish you to bring some of this work. Maybe not the take, not the. Um, don't bring the Aegis Alba poems to your students. Yeah, but, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, cool, yeah. there's quite a few other things in there that they could definitely connect to. Yeah. Thank you so much for your work, and thank you everyone for being such an amazing audience. Yeah, thank, thank, you so much. thank you so much. Even if whether you are. Not able to get the book or not, please make sure you say hi to the authors. They're going to be right over there, both Candace as well as Cynthia. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.